Hi, welcome back to my blog ADC English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today we are going to read William Shakespeare's one of the beautiful sonnet 130, which has been addressed to Dark Lady. As you all know, Shakespeare's sonnet number from 1 to 110 were written to express uh, the great love and affection or friendship, whatever we may call it, uh, to his fair friend. The, the vogue identity of that W.H. is still uh, maybe William Herbert, the Earl of Pembroke. So, uh, the definite identity of uh, W.H. or William Shakespeare's friend friend is not known properly. So is the case with his uh, Dark Lady. 130 uh, is one of those 26 sonnets which Shakespeare has addressed uh, not to his fair friend, uh, it was addressed to his dark lady. The identity of that dark lady, the physical identity of that dark lady is not till that possible convincingly. Uh, Dr. Rose in William Shakespeare, Shakespeare the Man, which was written in 1973, has a vogue gaze on who that dark lady should be, but that the critics do not find them convincing and such uh, several theories are there. So um, the dark lady or the identity of that very dark lady is not uh, known to us. But after reading all those 26 sonnets, it is evident that the, the lady who is dark skinned is not of high position in the society. Uh, she might be a person who is middle class but have some attractive beauty or the beauty that is enough for William Shakespeare's fascinations. William Shakespeare's sonnets, the keys by which we can unlock his heart as per Wordsworthy and comments, but the very uh, theory or critical acclaim uh, is being challenged by Browning, Robert Browning, uh, who has said that if Shakespeare has unlocked his heart through these keys, through these sonnets, then Shakespeare is less a Shakespeare. The um, critical argument is quite clear that Shakespeare even in his sonnets tried to um, write a dramatic uh, argument. Um, if we thoroughly analyze all those sonnets, we will come across four characters. Uh, they pop up uh, from different uh, angles and uh, with their emotions, with their emotional attachment to each other, we can find out a play within. So the arguments that Shakespeare's sonnets are subjective or objective, that subjective the theory that Shakespeare by these sonnets um, tells his own criteria, own ideologies and objective in that sense that he has dramatized and Shakespeare has hidden him. As we are telling Shakespeare's sonnets are involving four characters. Shakespeare himself, Shakespeare fair friend or patron WH and Shakespeare's rival poet and the dark skinned lady. So while studying uh, 130, we must remember that whatever is said here can have a, um, a beautiful endless variety of imagery, full uh, expressive way of stating the facts as well as unlocking the emotions but uh, we cannot uh, take them for granted uh, to unlock the very essence of Shakespeare's voices. So what Shakespeare wants to say cannot be found out in his sonnets convincingly. So the sonnet begins, My mistress eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? If hairs be wet, 
black words grow on her head. First quarterly tells that Shakespeare's mistress is ordinary woman of blood and flesh. She is beautiful, but she is beautiful in her own ways. No such forced epithets, no such forced parallels can match her beauty. It is nothing her, uh, in her eyes that can be compared with the sun. There is nothing such red lips. There is nothing of adoration of the breasts. The words and hairs are far apart. So, Shakespeare has rejected the so-called epithets and comparisons or the poetic canons that are being used so long. So, it might be a critical commentary on how to write poetry as it is, neither being hyperbolic. Shakespeare's sonnet number 130 is in that sense quite unconventional. Here the description of the mistress that the poet expresses is nothing of that style that is called Elizabethan idealism. In fact, the sonnets uh, from 127 to 154, uh, which are addressed uh, to Dr. Lady, Shakespeare does not adhere to the literary convention of praising the lilies and the roses and uh, the, the beauty of the beloved sex, complaining of her cruelty, coldness of heart, like most of the sonnets of that age of the, or the Renaissance England has written about. So, Shakespeare has changed the track only to make a point how a poetry of real light should have been written. So, Shakespeare's commentary on poetry is greater than what the mistress is look like here. So, uh, the sonnet number 130 is a more a critical commentary on poetry rather than stating uh, the beauty of the lady love. Shakespeare's time, the writers of love lyrics, be it Pensart, Sidney, Lodge, had got into the habit of using the same comparisons over and over again. A, it's like uh, the always same. seem to have the same kind of beauty and adoration. Eyes as bright as the sun, mouth as red as coral, breast as white as snow, hairs like a golden wares, and the complexion like roses, breath as sweet as perfume, voice like music, general appearance as a goddess. All these things taken together has been rebuked in the initial four lines, initial first quadrant. So, 130 launches a kind of a protest. The protest against what? The so-called mass-produced worn-out epithets. The poetic canon so long has been in vogue is uh, become obsolete and non-pleasing. That's the point Shakespeare wishes to deliver here. The so-called happy images of um, those Elizabethan sonneteers are missing here. The lady in Pensar's epithalamion has a locks that looks like a wear. But here, Shakespeare's mistress, that is dark lady, hardly grows such kind of crown. She is pretty, no doubt, but her epithets are missing. Because she is no goddess, she is a human. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. So the, the damasked roses that is mingled with red and white do not glow in her faces. Because 
seas of earthly beauty. No perfumes or fragrances do entertain her order. There is nothing musical in her voice. Hardly she is a golden or goddess-like. She walks on the ground like a common woman. Roses I see in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress wrecks. My mistress has a body odor that is fleshy, that is of blood and sweats. And her odor is the very odor that is unmatched with any of the others. And that is unique. That is beauty of my lady love. Then further he says, I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. So the music in her voice is missing because she is human. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. So his mistress is nothing musical in her voice. I grant I never saw a goddess go. She is of woman, she is of human, she is no goddess. As she walks, she treads on the ground, she tumbles and that is humanly. Yet the poet's mistress is not a pink one, not a white, not a goddess one. That does not make it a sense that she is not beautiful. She has enough of the beauty and charm to attract and, and get a lot of attraction towards the poet. The poet knows it full well her weakness her perfection. Yet she casts a pale in the poet's mind. The poet knows full well her weakness, her shortcomings, her imperfections. Yet she casts a pale on the poet's mind. Shakespeare considers her love as rare as any woman who has been most extravagantly chased after. So her beauty is unmatched. That's why she is so attractive yet she is so sought after. And Shakespeare is in love with that dark lady. Whereas being uniquely woman and unmatched from the crowds of those sonneteers, beloveds, she is as attractive to draw the attention of the poet William Shakespeare and to write a poem on her, celebrate that unmatched beauty. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress when she walks treads on the ground and yet by heaven I think my love as rare and any she belied with false compare. So there is no possibility of making a false comparison with that of my lady love because she is unmatched and her beauty is unmatched with the rest of the Elizabethan beloveds. Shakespeare's sonnet number 130 cannot be read separately because all of the 26 sonnets which are being addressed to Dark Lady cannot make a concrete picture of Dark Lady. Rather, different sets of the Dark Lady has been drawn. If we read as a sequence all of these imageries, uh, all of these comparisons, all of these um, picture description of Dark Lady, we will find a quite contradictory picture of Dark Lady. Sometimes she is cruel, black-hearted lady, full of vices, cunningness, lying, flattery, deceit, revenge, ill ambition, pride, disdain, even hell. 
although Shakespeare sees her as black as hell, as dark as night, his heart still loves what his eyes despise. In simple words, his attitude towards the dark lady is quite a love-hate relationship. The reference to her beauty or the description that we find in 130, sorry, number 130 uh, can be read as one of the picture of many images that we will find out in whole of the sonnet sequences of William Shakespeare. If we classify 130, we will find that it is very easy sonnet uh, as far as words or its meaning is concerned and its imageries or its epithets are also very simple as it hardly has such ornaments used here only to mock that ornamental use by the Elizabethan sonneteers that he um, that has provoked Shakespeare to compose this poem. But uh, this sonnet can be taken as a critic uh, that what should be the perfect sonneteering. But if we read uh, another sonnet uh, of William Shakespeare sonnet number 21 uh, where he boldly asserts uh, that uh, he will not write anything that is a copy of lies, anything extravagant, anything splendid, anything uh, that does not make a sense will not come through his pains. He says that let them say more what like of hearsay will. I will not pledge that purpose not to sell. So the point is clear from the artistic point of view 130 uh, clearly states Shakespeare's um, criticism on other sonneteers uh, how to write poetry, uh, how not to steal uh, the old age epithets one and time after again uh, only to make a flattery of the situation. and. As sonneteering has been a fashion of that time, so Shakespeare's warning or criticism is quite relevant to the topic. It is easy going for readers, but from critical point of view, uh, we have to think uh, what Shakespeare's objective of writing this poem and from what angle the sonnet or the dark lady that described lady which we find here who is um, to whom the sonnet has been addressed is a true replica of uh, Shakespeare's own thoughts or is it a dramatic creation that another question pops up uh, in our mind and here um, 130 while it criticizes the so called epithets and sonneteering and it says that my dark lady is um, not having that golden hair and golden hairs or that of rosy cheeks or that of the eyes like that of the sun but uh, Shakespeare had used that same flattery uh, in his other son sonnets while describing the dark lady for example just take two steps ahead sonnet number 132 here he says that the two eyes of the beloved or the dark lady and truly not the morning sun of heaven better becomes the great chicks of the east. So here nonetheless it is a extended competition with the sun with that of the eyes. So uh, what Shakespeare says does he uh, compromise his own criticism or uh, does he say for the dramatic purpose and uh, or 130 has been written only for a separate entity then he forgets everything about it and composes another poem where he was on the heart of the sonneteers who were following the same rules. So uh, Shakespeare 
has hit uh, his himself by its own arrow so then 30 as a critical acclaim or from the broader picture of critical analyzing Shakespeare's sonnet number 130 we will learn a lot of things regarding sonneteering uh, regarding dark lady and obviously uh, the Elizabethan sonneteering and the mechanism and the use of epithets Shakespeare's criticism and such things so if any question pop up regarding sonnet number 130 just ask me I will try my best to answer you and if you like this vlog please subscribe and stay tuned bye bye